Hi, I'm Caitlin. I'm 27 and I'm based out of the Houston area. And this is Financial Audit. So what do you do for a living in the Houston area? I'm a content writer. Content writer. Okay, very cool. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm, hmm, I'm kind of looking to hire one of those. So <laughs> interesting. Uh, who do you write content for? Or like, what do you do? Um, so I write for um, a basically an ad agency. Um, so most oh, of very cool. yeah, most of what I write is like uh, articles and blogs um, mm-hmm. using like SEO guidelines. And, okay. Yeah. Cool. And what do you bring in a year doing that? Um, so I'm hourly. I started at like eleven fifty an hour, and now I'm at like sixteen fifty. Okay, how do you feel with that? Um, I mean, I'm I was really happy when I got like the raises, but it's still not quite enough to be where I want. Yeah, to be. how many hours a week do you work? <laughs> Only thirty. Why? Um, it's like contractor, and or it's it's like a contract, and um, yeah, <laughs> it was uh, basically the first place that I could get experience. In well, this how field. long have you been here? Um, since December. At that job since December? Yeah. Oh, what'd you do before that? <laughs> uh, yeah, actually, I guess my whole situation could probably use the backstory. Go for it. Backstory. Here we go. <laughs> Diving in. Um, so I graduated in 2020, um, with an English degree. So, uh, I was like, I was a little bit anxious, um, I guess at 20 in 2020 when like everything was happening, Mm -hmm. I was working in a grocery store and I basically just tried to get like the first job I could. And, uh, so I spent a year in the, um, and that's kind of like an AmeriCorps ish type thing. Okay. Um, and like I got scholarships and, uh, got stipends every month and it was like, um, yeah, I did. It was it was a lot of fun actually. I loved the work, um, but it was only for like a year. And during that year, um, I bought a car. Okay. <laughs> and this is why I'm like kind of in a financial bind right now. The car um, itself, jeez. Okay, well, so was... I'm assuming you took out debt from the way you laid it out. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so what happened that year? It if I had like kept that like the income that, that I was at, which wasn't that much, but it was like steady. Um, I would have been fine. I put like $5,000 down on it. It was about 24,000, I think. What's the car? It was. Was? <laughs> okay. All right. What? It was a Kia Soul. What happened? Um, so the week after I bought it, I got in a car crash. A week after? Okay, but this was insured, though. It wasn't with that car, actually. Why? It's it's the law. Well, oh, no, 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 it, it was insured, but it, the oh. crash uh, was in a company vehicle. Me and my coworker had been telling them, I guess, like, the site mechanic. There. Um, actually, since I'm going to say this, maybe we could cut out how I said, like, the actual... Okay, we'll believe but, it. Yeah. Um, uh, like the site mechanic there, me and my coworker kept telling him, hey, something's wrong with this car. Um, like the wheel was shaking. The suspension was like really bad. I'm so confused though. You took out <laughs> debt for this car. This car, yes. But... Um, <laughs> but it's the business car? Uh, no. So, sorry. Um, so it's like kind of... I, I'm trying to... Ex- sort of like get through like the what whole car situation. Broke? Um, the company car. Okay. How, why did this impact you? Um, well, it was like a really bad car crash. Yeah. Like, um, we flipped over the oh, highway wow. like five times. Jeez. Um, That's crazy. and <laughs> after that I had like a lot of anxiety driving. <laughs> oh, sure. I could imagine. Yeah. I was actually interested in continuing to pursue like conservation work once I got out that year but um but because like I was so anxious with driving and also I had that on my driving record after that um even though it was mostly due to a faulty vehicle um like I don't think I would have been able to like get a job in that field after that okay (laughs) uh (laughs) but so the reason why um I got into a mess with the car that I bought the Kia Soul (laughs) is because I made a bad decision (laughs) 
career wise after that. Oh, to what? Um, so after I was able to save up quite a bit of money. And so I thought that I could afford to like go and teach English basically, um, sure. in Peru. Oh, and I was able to do it for a while. Um, but I would say in like May, I made like $500 a month, which May was of last year or something last year. Yes. Okay. So a year ago. Yeah. So I made like $500 a month, which was good for, but for Peru. the living cost. Okay. Cost of living there. Good for Peru, but okay. not good for saving for when sure. I got back to the U S. Okay. So the plan was always to come back. Um, I didn't have a plan. Okay. Well, is, is, you kind of graduated late for your age. Yes. What would you do? What you like? Did you end up going back to college or did you take college very slow? Like, what was it? Um, well, I, yeah, I started at community college and I was like working at a grocery store. Like at 18? At 17. Oh, um, okay. And. So what took us almost a decade <laughs> or a decade? Uh, I wanted to take a brief moment to thank today's sponsor, Public. Sometimes it definitely feels like there's a better place to put money. Did you know you could be earning a 5% yield on your cash through government-backed treasuries? With Public's new treasury accounts, you can access the 5% yield of U.S. treasuries directly on your phone with the flexibility of a bank account. Unlike a traditional savings or high-yield savings account, the yield you get with treasury bills is a fixed rate, so you always know the rate you get when you purchase. But buying U.S. treasuries can be super complicated, or at least it was until public came along. Now you can manage your treasuries, stocks, ETFs, fine arts, collectibles, and even crypto all with public. And the best part? Public will automatically reinvest your treasury bills at maturity. So what are you waiting for? Go to public.com forward slash Caleb Hammer to start getting 5% on those U.S. backed treasury bills today. Public's platform helps you to become a better investor with access to custom company metrics, live shows about the markets, and real-time analytics. Members control how they invest with a suite of powerful tools and get insights from a community of millions of investors, creators, and analytics. So head to public.com forward slash Caleb Hammer to start earning more on your cash. Well, I, I really wanted to get out of my living situation then, and yeah. I had a friend in California who told me to move back there because it's sorry okay. this my whole situation is very uh sorry yeah it's um uh yeah so I had a friend who told me to move to California um basically to get out of what my living situation was, what was back your living then. situation uh <laughs> the same one that I'm in now which is <laughs> with my parents oh okay <laughs> why do you need to get out of it was it uh, bad or you just wanted to um, it, uh, it's not ideal. <laughs> um, no, yeah, just. How so? Um, like, I mean, well, I know this is like going on YouTube, but, um, I, without going into details, it's like not good for my mental health. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so my friend. Uh, told me to move to California. Did, I did. Yeah. I didn't want to go into a crazy amount of debt for um, the like out of state tuition. Okay. So I just worked for gotcha. like I think it was actually two years um, because of like the timing. Yeah. Like usually it's just one year, but um, so I think I worked for like two years, and then I went to community college, and then. I transferred from community college to UC Berkeley. Um, okay. And I don't have college debt, <laughs> thank you. Very good. Uh, but, okay. yeah. Well, okay. What does your financial situation look like today? Where are we at? Give yourself a score, zero out of 10. Zero. <laughs> no, really? Yeah. Okay, well, what's your financial situation? Um, well, living at home, I'm... Uh, I mean, that's I, not necessarily the worst thing. I mean, you just graduated. Yeah, and then I am in debt for a car that's not the Kia Soul. Oh, yeah, so going back, the Kia Soul was basically repoed. Mm -hmm. And um, the only way that I was able to, like, get out of that situation, at least the only way I saw, and this was before I even started watching your videos, um, was by, like, getting 
a uh, like basically trading it in at a dealership for like a different car um, because they took the Kia Soul because I I was when I got back to the U.S. I was trying to yeah I know I was trying to um, see if I could like pay pay them once I got back and they they wouldn't let me even try so yeah okay so you have car debt yes <laughs> okay all right well let's just let's just go through everything and we'll, we'll see um, but before we do you should hit subscribe because we're trying to get to 500,000 subscribers and we are very close I mean so you have a job now working 30 hours a week 1650 so 30 well first let's let's get that so 1650 times 30 times 52 divided by 12 is an average of $2,145 a month. Does that sound right? Um, I would say it generally averages out to a little less than 2000 A little less? Yes. Houston's cheap for Texas, but living on that is still... No wonder you're still with your parents, yeah? Yeah. Right? <laughs> so what? What does it average out to? Like 1900 I mean... Yeah, I like 1900 Now, you said your contractor. Are you W-2 or W-9? Um, ten ninety nine. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Ten ninety nine. Yeah, I don't know why I said that. But uh, yeah. yeah, and I, okay. So you wouldn't have to pay much in Texas anyway, and you could probably defer or, or write off of quite a few things. But are you putting any aside for taxes for what might come due? Yeah, I try to each paycheck like before I do anything else. I try to set aside like two hundred into your savings. Yes. So the savings that I see right here is that that's a your deferred money is for taxes. Yes. Do you pay quarterly or annually for taxes? Annually. Okay. So it comes up to what, eighteen, nineteen hundred bucks hits your account? What hits your account? Um I would say like four fourteen. No. Bull what wait, 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 wait. A month? Or per per per, per paycheck? Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh per paycheck I would say about about a thousand. How do you get when do you get paid? How often? Um, twice a month. Okay, so two thousand dollars. Yeah, like about 2000 yeah it's sometimes a little less sometimes i would say usually a little less so what a <laughs> thousand nine hundred what what is this do you know how yeah. much money you make one thousand nine hundred <laughs> okay thousand nine hundred what immediately concerns me i mean you live with your parents but there's automatic debt payments and stuff right automatic debt payments or do you manually pay them I manually pay them. You manually pay everything. Okay, so this is less worrisome, but still, $5.87 in a checking account? I mean, that's still just a scary number to have. Yeah. Because you have a little bit in your savings, but that's set aside for taxes, so you really don't have any money if anything's to come up. Yes. Yeah, even with the $5.87 in our checking, you don't go necessarily crazy, but if that's what we have and we're trying to get out of debt and all this stuff and we'd rather not live with our parents, but we're still living with them because we can't afford anything, why are we spending $20 at Texas Roadhouse and going to Tim Hortons, cash shopping out $25, cash shopping out $20, cash shopping out $9, and what's this, Harper's... Oh, that's bread. the dentist. Oh, okay, well, that's okay. And you do that again. And then... And Apple subscription and Jack Pocket and Jack Pocket <laughs> and Waterburgers and Starbucks and Nintendo purchases and Amazon. This must be the car loan. I circled that, but I didn't get a statement for the car, so I was like, what is going on? And Jack Pocket and Waterburger. What's Jack Pocket? <laughs> That's the lottery. I know I shouldn't. You're I gambling? <laughs> You're this doesn't make sense. The just right out the gate, if we have like almost no money in our checking account, we're trying to pay off debt, we'd rather not live with our parents, we're only working 30 hours a week, and you're living at what? What does it come out to here? Before taxes, everything, everything comes out to $22,800 a year. Why are we gambling? It's kind of the poor person tax. I think I've heard a lot of people refer to it sometimes when it comes to the lottery. Why are you lotterying? What? You're smiling. What? I'm smiling because I, I cry easily. <laughs> okay. Um, I got to make sure that you're not like bull****. Why are you gambling three times a month and not cheap purchases either of this gambling? What's happening? Um, I think those days are just like when it's really... Um, what? When they're really what? 
I probably shouldn't. I don't know if I should have come on here. Um, Why? It's okay. It's okay if you <laughs> cry. It's okay if emotions happen. The point of this is that it is intense. I call out what's intense. And if you emotionally are impacted by that, that means it's at least showing something. I'm not wanting you to cry necessarily. Well, I'm not at all. <laughs> but if that is what is being shown, it is a step that you are making coming on here. Mm-hmm. So, yes, you should have come on here. This is good for you and helping other people in your situation. So I appreciate you coming on for that alone, just for other people. But you should be helping yourself as well. So it's okay. And it is okay to emotionally react to this nonsense. This is nonsense. (laughs) And someone calling you out on that, especially in the more aggressive manner that I am, that's okay. But what the f*** at the same time? What were you saying? Uh, Hold on. Sometimes you gamble in, like, certain situations when? Um, it's usually, like, when I come home and it's just, like, um, like, I can't handle being at home. Um, and, yeah. Can you give us any more detail on your home situation? Um. Again, anyone who comes on the show, fun fact, you can cut anything afterwards. Uh Uh-huh. So it's your choice what makes it in. I want our main goal should be to get you into a safe place. I want to get you into a safe place and the other people as well. But again, I won't go into detail because I don't want to give anything away that we cut and lead to any breadcrumbs essentially. But we definitely want to get you into a good situation. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's very important. So this is like, kind of a cope thing that we do with this. We're just escapism. We just kind of, we, we've, we've gone to the lottery. Yeah. I know it's not good. And I, I stopped, um, since then, like, well, why was it specifically the lottery? I guess just like, why was that the outlet? That's, that's what I want to get to. Um, I guess just thinking like, Oh, if I, if I could like, when I could get out of here and like just have more freedom, I guess. Okay. Well, that's something. No, I mean we can we can circle back to that when it comes to things, savings. So what happened? So with this, what's a little weird about the savings mm-hmm. that I'm not happy about, and what I'm more concerned about is that okay, there's a thousand two hundred forty-four in there. Oh, your tax liability. Who knows what it will be. Mm-hmm. Um, exactly. Maybe a little more than that. Well, at 22, it's going to be, it's going to barely be anything and you'll be able to deduct some things anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, but even still having a thousand two hundred forty four as the only savings, we want to get you out of there, but we can't get you out of there with only a thousand two hundred forty four sitting in. But this is what concerns me and, you know, immediately sticks out to me and borderline upsets me. I'm being nice now <laughs> is through here. Uh, you do a lot of keep the change, so it's like roundups and stuff like that. Yeah. But we took out $100, and we took out $700. We're taking out money from the savings. Oh, I don't remember what the 100 was, but the 700 was for taxes last year. Um, even so though you I, did owe taxes. Yeah, even though I was working abroad, um, I had like an online job towards the end of the year. What did you make last year? <laughs> I think... Like overall, less than ten thousand because I was because I, I was like in Peru. Standard deductions? You just took standard deductions. Um. Yeah. So. Because as a business, I want you because you have to drive quite far to work. I mm-hmm. want you to be deducting gas. I want you to be deducting depreciation on your car. So I can deduct uh, gas as a contract. Because you're required to go there to the job that you're contracting for. Okay. I want you to. Clean I wasn't some like of sure stuff. if I could or not. We can sit you down with the tax expert. That's definitely not where I have the most extensive knowledge, but we want you to be able to take advantage of the code that mm. is there, especially as you, as your own business. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. You good? You holding up well? Yeah. <laughs> it's big, big stuff. Yeah. Uh, I mean, finances, life, all of it combined. I mean, it's, it's a show for everyone in a different way. Mm-hmm. So it's okay. Um, definitely don't be embarrassed or anything. That's for sure. <laughs> That's for sure. Now, I have this. I have. N- so this is. Uh, you have other stuff, but I see the one. The only statement I got was for a Visa customer. Or customized cash rewards 
card? Um. Oh yes. So I actually have two. I have two credit cards. Yeah. One has zero. Good. on it. Um, that's also B- Bank of America. Um, that was a travel credit card. I did really well with that one when I was in Peru. I did it yeah. the right way. I just like I would spend a little bit and then I would pay it off right away. Okay. <laughs> and then once I got to the U.S. is when I got in <laughs> credit card debt. So <laughs> what's going on? Um. So with uh, yeah. So the reason why my credit card balance is so high. Mm-hmm. Um. The first, I think, the first purchase that I made on it was putting a thousand down for the car, which was not a good decision. You paid, oh, you did the down payment on your car you financed through your credit card? Yes. <laughs> oh, unfortunately you are not rare for that, but it's just so bad. It's just so bad that people do that. And that's because you had nothing saved up, I assume, right? Yeah. And it was an emergency. You had to get the car, essentially. Yeah. We want to get you to a place where when stuff like that happens, you have a fallback. Um, I'm not going to yeah. yell. No, but, you, you can yell. It's fine. Why the f- I'm done. Why the f- <laughs> are we getting Amazon purchases on a card we're trying to pay off? Why are we doing that? Why is that a thing? Um, I have made a few Amazon purchases on my credit card, and yeah. I know it was not a good decision. Um, s- usually the Amazon purchases I make are for like... Um, like body wash and stuff like that. Um, and then... Which is still... You can... Well, I would... Okay. But... Um, People tend to overspend on Amazon in general, so I just try to advise it against it when getting out of debt. You obviously, get body wash, but why, we wouldn't be doing it on a credit card either if it was at the grocery store. So why are we doing this on a credit card? You'd put it on your debit card if it's off of Amazon still mm-hmm. in the situation. So why are we spending money on a credit card that we're trying to pay off? We need to get to the logic or else we won't be able to overcome it. Yeah. Um... Yeah, that is that is something I need to stop. Why are you doing it? I guess, like, they're just... It's like a body wash that I don't know for sure if I'm going to, like, find it in a store. No, but why are we using a credit card? Oh. Oh, probably because there's $4 like, in your checking account? Yeah. So we don't have money, so we can't afford it. So if we get something cheap, we get a cheap bar of soap or something. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, I, that's not what I would want you to have. I, obviously, we want something that's, like, best for the skin, but... Like, what are we doing? Uh, minimum, so the balance is of $4,141.83. The minimum monthly payment of $99. Good news is you did pay more. You did $200. But we had the $36 purchase, and we got some gas for $33 as well. What is the interest that you're losing on this? Because it does not show up in the statement. What's happening? Yeah. Honestly, I don't know what the interest is, but they always charge, like, $70 oh. at the end of the month. So with the new purchases and with the interest, you basically have, you didn't really pay much more than the minimum monthly payment. Yeah. What's crap? We cannot spend on here anymore. We just can't do that. That doesn't make sense. Okay. Mm -hmm. You're trying to get out of it. Stop. If you're trying to get out of it, stop going into it. Yeah. Now in your email, (laughs) This has some other things laid out that I just don't have dates for. Mm-hmm. Is this the car? Yes, that is the car. No. When did you get this? When did you get this, possibly? In January. You got it this just this January? This most recent January? Yeah. What? Do- yeah, two payments made. What is... What possibly is the loan length for this death car? Death car. I think it's 72 months. 72 months? Why? How, how long have you been watching this stuff? You said you've been watching for a bit that we talked before. Pretty much after I got the car. <laughs> oh. oh. The thing is, it's okay, $9,063 remaining. Doesn't sound absolutely insane, but you're making essentially that much money a year after your taxes that you've paid. So this equals your thing because you're only working 30 hours a week at $16.50 a year. And then you have that stupid card that's almost maxed out. You're losing $70 a month on it in interest. But worst of all, on this car, on this car that you did, 22% interest. 
Twenty-two percent interest. What did you do? Did you get this finance through the people that you were buying it from, or what was this? What was the situation? This is terrible. Um. So they were like the only people that would take the Kia Soul, and um, because I still had the Kia Soul, it's just that, yeah. yeah. So it was, um, yeah, it was a really bad decision on my part. Yeah, not great. Sh- what is this car? It's a. It's also a Kia. A Kia Nero. Year. Um, twenty seventeen. Is it worth nineteen thousand dollars? Um, I think in Kelly Blue Book it said it was, but um, yeah, the car payment is really bad, and I shouldn't have gotten into a car payment like this to begin with. But it's um, being sold used from car places at like twenty thousand dollars. But um it is a hybrid, so with how far I drive, even though the payment That is not absolutely really even hurts. coming close to justifying losing almost five hundred dollars a month when you bring in before you need to set money aside only a thousand nine hundred on the high end. Yeah. So this car is probably post taxes, post what whatever the adri- average is, like thirty to forty percent of your income. Yeah. It's killing you. We need you to move out so you can get to a more safe place. We can't do that if if all the money is going to this and then just where your income's at in the Houston area and everything like that. If you get a cheap place, hundred percent of your income goes to rent, keeping the lights on. And driving this thing still. Yeah. I know that, um, I think that, like, I I need a different car. Like, I need to get rid of this somehow. Um, yeah. What's your credit and, score? Uh, I think it's, like, you have credit karma on there right now. Okay. Um, I can work with that. You have credit karma on there? Yeah. It went down because, oh, actually, I said I have two credit cards, but Bank of America just closed my other one. Because so, it has been a- inactive for a very, very long time. Yeah, but um, yeah, so I just have that one. But six fifty, okay, or six sixty two, depending. Total accounts fourteen. Uh, hopefully, some are closed. They are. You still owe a little bit to your University of California. Oh, you said you had no student loans, and you come in here, and I open this, and there's it's only three thousand dollars. But with your income situation, did you even know? I haven't seen that actually. Well, you owe it two thousand nine hundred forty-nine dollars to them. It's an education loan through that college. Since the whole situation is just death, Marcelo says hi. <laughs> um, yeah, I've been trying to get another job, um, but I think like because of my uh, like, I haven't been working at my current job very long. Um, well, what's those in the writing field or just anything that makes money? Um, mostly in the writing field, but also just anything that makes money. You have a degree. Yes. You, all, you can always get certified in things as well. I mean, you know, because you're a member of the audience. I always talk about course Course careers. careers. Yeah, and I love them, though, because it gets you into tech. So that's something I've partnered with them. So that's something you could look into. But, of course, if that's not your alley, that's fine as well. What we need to do is definitely find a way to increase your income. That's a big thing. Because you actually weren't spending ridiculously. Obviously, we don't want to gamble. But you weren't going crazy eating out every single day like many people on this show. So we need to increase your income. And then we need to get out of this death debt. Yeah, um, I actually started trying to freelance. Um, I actually wrote an article for a lawyer. Yeah. Uh, I would say I actually wrote it like two weeks ago. Um, and then I had to make some edits because even though I didn't use AI, <laughs> apparently it detected that I used AI. So I had to like edit it and be, I guess, like I just made it less robotic sounding, I guess. And, gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Um, and, well, it's because in my current job, I use AI all the time because sure. they want us to. So I think that my writing style is starting to. But um, anyways, I'm honestly not sure if he's going to pay me. Um, what the f- 
Like I, I did was the there edits. Was a contract and, signed? No. Oh, you got to do but, that. You got to do that and take him to small claims. Um, but well, I mean, it's, he, it's still possible he'll pay me. I just uh, we'll follow up. Have you been following up? Uh, yeah. The last time we followed up was like on Thursday. Mm. Um, and he said we'd talk on Friday, but then we didn't. That's why I'm not sure. We need you to make more money. So go get certified in something. Use your degree to get any job or work a second job or drive Uber Eats when you're not, you know, working. Because you just, if we can just get you to work in thir- uh, 40 to 50 hours a week by doing 20 hours of something else, I'm good. Or getting a better job. Oh, um, I don't know if you're even going to use like that whole jumble thing I talked about at the beginning, but uh, with, with the car that I, that I crashed in, um, it shows up on my insurance. Mm. So my insurance is like $180 a month. Um, and I know that if I were to try like Uber Eats or something, they would raise the insurance even higher. So then go if work I get a coffee a, shop or McDonald's, I don't care. We need to <laughs> get you more money right now. Yeah. I'd rather you get into a better career position, but more money right now is the answer to your story because you're not spending like insane. We do need those two little purchases on the visa. We're not doing it anymore. Mm-hmm. And when you want to eat out, uh, okay, well, not to call you out, Marcelo, but is he the, is he the boyfriend? Oh, no. No, no, no. Marcelo is one of my friends that I met in Peru. Well, suck. <laughs> well, I was gonna tell. I was gonna say, get the boyfriend to pay for. I do. All I the do foods. have a boyfriend though. Okay, get the boyfriend <laughs> to pay for all the foods then. Yeah, <laughs> it's the perfect situation. That's what they're there for. Well, he. <laughs> no, it's. No, it's not. <laughs> he. Uh, my boyfriend lives in like the Tyler area, so we're like kind of. <laughs> <laughs> if you go out to eat, he pays for it. If you go and do these things, he pays for it. He, he or does. Or you actually, do free stuff. Yes. Good. Good. <laughs> Good, good job. Because <laughs> right now, debt minimum monthly payments five eighty six, and then your total debts we're looking at about twenty six thousand when you bring in less than that a year, and they're all really bad incomes. Car insurance? What did you say that was? One hundred and eighty. What's your health insurance situation? Don't have it. <laughs> That's bad. You know, why aren't you on your parents? I'm 27. Oh, yeah, you are. I, forgot, I, first, I keep thinking you're younger. Okay. <laughs> it's time to use the uh, Affordable Health Care Act marketplaces. Use that because where your income situation is, the subsidies you're going to get on them should be crazy. It should bring down health insurance you can probably do for like 50, 100 bucks a month because with your situation at home and something else. Oh, the anxiety around driving and stuff like that. I also want to get you in therapy. And anyone should be in that anyway, whether or not you have a situation. But you have a situation. So let's get you taken care of on the mental side and then deal with you on the financial side, making more money. Cool? Mm -hmm. So take a look at that next time there's open enrollment. Uh, Do you grocery shop for yourself? Do you eat the family foods? What does that look like? Uh, Yeah, I I do grocery shopping. Since I don't pay rent, I like to like, I cook for them. No, (laughs) no. Or was that the deal? Um... I mean, it wasn't necessarily the deal, but well, I mean, like sometimes, sometimes my mom gets food. Sometimes I get food. And I want you to take care of yourself if they're not taking care of you and that's fine. You're 27. They don't need to by any means, but I'm not about you cooking for them. When we, when you barely have any income and any income that we can squeeze out of it needs to go to paying off debt. It doesn't make sense for you to be taking care of them. So conversation happens, mom, dad, guess what? My situation's f- and I need to start paying for it so I can move out at some point and like live an adult life. Mm-hmm. But in order to do that, I gotta cut down on everything. That includes me spending money on fun, but unfortunately it also means spending extra money on groceries. I just gotta take care of myself so I can get everything taken care of. If they're like, like holes and they're like, well now you're gonna have to pay for rent because I'm, even though you laid out your situation you're gonna be working your butt off to get out of it, we're gonna make you do rent anyway i don't think my mom would do that well there you go then it's not a worry so you're gonna stop that you're gonna have that conversation and that's it Mm -hmm. now if they if you want to cook to a meal for everyone they can contribute to that pile but we're gonna limit your grocery spending money to 300 dollars a month nothing more Mm -hmm. whether that includes a little bit cooking for them that's your choice but 300 dollars is the absolute cap cool Mm mm-hmm 
And then your toothpaste, your toilet paper, all that good stuff is going to be $100 a max. What other minimum monthly payments do you have that I'm not thinking about? You don't help oh, take care well, of utilities or anything? Phone? What about your cell phone? Well, oh, yeah. I pay for my cell phone. It's like $50. Okay. Gas? What's your gas bill on a monthly basis driving? $30 a week, so like 120 Okay. You don't have to pay for internet or anything like that? For the no. Home? Okay. Okay, cool. Well, this gives us a little bit of room to work with, but you'd have to be at home for a while, and we know that we can't do that for very long. <sighs> you don't have much to work with. 1900 and then... Well, let's just say what you have to set aside for taxes. You only paid 700 last year. Is that right? Mm hmm So we're going to set aside basically like $65 a month. We'll call that taxes at 65 bucks a month. So of the 1900 that hits, needs category is minimum $1,401. And that's with your entire living situation taken care of. So do you get how like these proportions it just it's mathematically things are not making sense right now yeah that's 74 percent of your income is going to your needs category when it should max out at an extreme 50 percent yeah and you don't have rent or any really thing to take care of so we got to get you a better job whether it's a job you like or don't like i don't care we need to get you a good full-time job good career position that you can excel in and luckily writing's remote it can be remote. So yeah. uh, just look everywhere, apply like it's a full-time job, and then for your second and third full-time job, you go and you work your ass off because we need to add a minimum extra $1,000 to this a month. Minimum. Mm -hmm. Not even a choice. It's not. Yeah. And that's, that's just so we can start paying off debt. You need to bring an extra $2,000 a month minimum so before we can even start talking about rent. Mm-hmm. So what do you do in that situation? What are you going to do? I need I need to know what you're going to do about this income situation before we even lay out a potential plan. Um. Well, I mean, I've I've been trying to get jobs and stuff. Like I've, what and I swear I'm not usually this tearful. Like I like at interviews, I feel like I actually do pretty good. Like I'm like it's okay. Smiling and <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, what? But, what do you mean you've been trying to get jobs though? Like I I made it to two interviews for like real salaried positions Good. um but yeah like i felt like the first one actually went pretty well except for they did ask me the question like oh why why are you leaving your current job like you've only been there for a few months and i i just kind of said something along the lines of like oh i just uh feel like uh there's room for growth elsewhere or <laughs> something that's not along a terrible answer lines. that's not a terrible answer to say um, you're uh you know, I was looking for positions out of college, uh, and I found that position. To, uh, I found that position. It's been a good position. I'm looking for somewhere to settle down for my career position, though. Mm -hmm. You know, for decades to come, something like that. Yeah. Yeah, but, I mean, I didn't get that one, which yeah. is fine. That's fine. I mean, that'll continue to happen. As long as you're applying, you're continuing interview processes, I'm happy with that. But mm -hmm. now you got to go coffee shop, water burger, McDonald's, work. I don't care. It's mm -hmm. something that you're doing another 20, 30 hours a week. Mm -hmm. And you don't get, you don't move. <sighs> I don't want people to think you're in danger because we didn't put what's in. You're not in danger. So that's why if you were in no. danger, I'd be like, you're moving out today. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not in danger. No. danger no. This is not good for mental health. Yeah. Which I don't really compromise on that either. I'm just trying to figure out this math thing. It's only, you know, your situation the best. Mm -hmm. If you bring an extra thousand hours a month and you're able to get yourself a small little studio and that is what's better for you, knowing your own mind, then do that. What I would rather see is you make an extra two thousand hours and once you make an extra if you make an extra thousand hours, all that's going towards that. If you make an extra two thousand hours, then we can go get a small studio apartment and the rest goes towards that. That's what I would like to see. But you know you, health comes first every day. Every single day. So if you feel that is best for you, go get that. And then that would leave us with an extra $300 a month to put, sorry, $500 a month to put towards the debt, which mm -hmm. is going to be very slow progress. So this is one thing that I think we're going to do. Your credit score 
Not a great credit score, but you will apply for, you will get approved for personal loans. We're going to take out a personal loan, ten thousand dollars. Really? Yay! It's super exciting, isn't it? No, not Woo! really. <laughs> yeah. But what comes with that? You're getting a ten thousand dollar car that you're taking to a mechanic, and you're getting the sign off, a mechanic that you build a relationship with, and you're private sailing this death. $22,487 month for many, 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 many years to come. $19,000 balance, essentially what you make a year. We're selling it private sale for at least that minimum. And then you can go get the, the other car once you sell it. You're doing that, getting that minimum, and you're paying that off immediately. The 22% doesn't make any sense. The 72 months doesn't make any sense. The balance on it being as much as you make on a yearly basis makes absolutely zero sense. So we're getting rid of it, and we're getting a $10,000 car, and we are paying that off as quick as possible because mm -hmm. the interest rate is not going to be any better. But what we can do in that situation with the $70 a month being lost on this $4,141 credit card that you're not spending on anymore... What we're doing there is paying it off as quick as possible. Let's say you have that extra $500 a month because you make an extra $1,000 and you're using that to pay for an apartment and utilities and all that good stuff and renter's insurance. Woo, 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 woo. $4,141 divided by 500. It's going to take eight months to pay that off. So we just need to make more money in general because that's going to be that's gonna be crazy. And then the $10,000, I mean, that's going to take, that took eight months, it's going to take... 19, 20 months to pay off. You see how, like, this is just going to go on forever at that situation? Mm -hmm. And that's if with the $10,000 car. I mean, this is going to be a multi, -mul this is going to be a half decade, full decade type thing if you keep the full car. Then we got to think about the student loan thing that you have at some point as well. Yeah. So, either way, the payment operations goes from the credit card to the $10,000 car because you're getting ready this $20,000 car because it makes absolutely no sense to have it's stupid it's stupid it makes no sense mm -hmm. you're also not paying on that visa thing and everyone say it with me you, you are not, not a credit, credit card, card person. person you're not you can take advantage of the fizz card because you keep wanting to build a credit score you talked about that so you can at least do that and it helps set limits on things in your, uh, with your income geared towards college students still helps in your situation especially for the credit building that's good but you are not a credit card person so once this is paid off, maybe you put one of your gas fill-ups on it a month and you pay it off so it doesn't close, but that's it. We're mm -hmm. not using credit cards anymore. We're not. Doesn't mm -hmm. make sense. It's stupid. You're paying that off as quick as you can, then you're paying off the car as quick as you can. Whatever your rent and the rest of these all layered up, 1141 plus a rent, 2500 you might want to save up $2,500 as quick as you can before you start paying extra payments on all these things. But the thing is, is I cannot lay out a concrete plan right now because I don't know what the income is going to be. I'm telling you, go make an extra $1,000, $2,000 a month by working every single moment in your life. Go do that. But whether or not that happens, I don't know. I would, knowing how bad the debt is because I was in even worse debt. And I climbed out of it. But knowing how bad that is, that I would go do that. Mm -hmm. Whether you do, I don't know. So I cannot lay out a plan based on you doing that. So if you stay at home and it's $500 a month because you're not working anything else, it's going to take like five years, six years, fully funded emergency fund. You know, that's six years living at home. So I mean, we can't afford our, our rent in this. So at a minimum, you have to go get a second job anyway if you're going to go rent something. Mm-hmm. So I, not to just be dire and negative, but that's the situation looks like because usually what happens is I can lay out a plan based on someone's income and I can say, if you do this, 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 you'll get out of debt. For your situation, it's less about cutting back on things. It's will you go make more money? And I cannot create a, uh, I'm not going to repeat myself. I already said that. But w if you will do that, then you can get out of the situation. Right now, we can't get into another place mathematically. Right now, we can't really pay this off mathematically, which sucks. I know. Yes, emo the, it's just, this is okay. That is the natural emotion that I think most people should have about this because it's overwhelming. But you can do this. The good part is, and here's the good part, the, the more optimistic side. If you go get that job uh, or multiple jobs and just work your butt off, bring an extra $2,000 a month and pay this off three times as quick in a couple years... Mm -hmm. And while you're living in another place and you save up a fully funded emergency fund after the fact, the other side's awesome. The other side is awesome. I can't tell you how great it is to be on the other side of bad debt. For years and years and years now for myself, 
it's awesome. You see your retirement accounts grow. You have that sense of safety with an emergency fund. You have that sense of safety knowing you'll be able to retire. You can do so much more in life. You can have fun without it being like bad in terms of spending money. And there's just so much more. You can plan your future. You're not just living day to day trying to survive. So there is a good side to it. What's required initially is the sacrifice. And the sacrifice for you is making those monies. Mm-hmm. So, that's my rant to you. I need to know from your end. Give me a layout. What do the next few months look like? What do the next couple of years look like? Um, so I, I really have been trying to make more. Um, I like I said, I started to try freelancing, and I just, I mean, no, I don't know if that's gonna work out. I mean, again, make them sign contracts. Um, I mean, we did write it out in email that it would be like eight cents per word. Um, Might which, be worth going to small claims. Um, I, w- I, w- I think it's, I should at least wait like another week. Sure, sure. But, you know the situation better than me, but sorry, yeah. go ahead. Um, but I calculated that in like eight cents per word. Um, it's basically like like $80 or so an article. Um, and at my current job, I write like, so like with the AI, I write like 10 articles a day within the six hours without the AI I could write like six which is um like what I would do for my actual clients I wouldn't use AI but um either way just like going forward what does it, what does it look like I mean honestly like I would like to be a freelancer um like if I could actually make eight cents per word and like depend on people to actually pay but I, I also know that it's like tough to like it's tough to start out um, and it do, that does require a lot of time, um, and maybe it would be better to just like. Do so far, the this depend- is making me nervous to hear because I mean I want you to do that, but we need to be in a better position before we spend all the time on something that's not having instant return. We need to get out of this now. Uh-huh. So are you telling me you're not going to go get a second and third job and work your butt off? Uh, no, I was actually about to. Uh, my my finished thought was going to be like. I probably should get like a second job instead of trying to work on starting my own thing. So hmm. I hate that. Cause it sounds so like crappy, but we just need to make sure you're safe for safe first mentally and financially. And unfortunately that comes with getting more monies right now. Yeah. <laughs> well, do you have any final thoughts? Um, I know I cried a lot, but like, I'm not, I'm not like trying to be a victim. It's just this situation is really, it's really hard. Yeah. It's okay. You'll. And you'll, I, I really am trying to get out of it. You will. You will. We talked about what's necessary. I believe in you. For Caitlin, one, I want to really thank her for being on. That was a very tough conversation, but I really hope it has helped people who are in similar situations out there. And if you're one of those people, please surround yourself with a good group of people and, you know, hopefully try to find yourself in a better living situation in whatever way necessary. For her hammer financial score, spending within a budget, I wanted to give more points. I have to give it two out of 10 just because there's like no money in the checking account and we're still putting money on a credit card that we're trying to pay off. So I can't go higher than a two out of 10, but it wasn't like she was going crazy spending. Debt, I'm gonna give it two out of 10 because it's certainly not one of the craziest situations we've ever seen. It's just the income to that debt is really bad. Retirement, there's nothing. Zero out of 10 emergency fund, a little bit started. So one out of 10 real estate, not even in that conversation yet. Zero out of 10. That aggregates down to a total hammer financial score one out of 10. Make sure to get your free $5 by putting $5 into an Acorns account using the link in the description below. You get a free $5. I get a free $5. Woo. And don't forget to follow my Instagram and Twitter. Thanks.